Hmm. Howdy folks, and it's Monday. Oh, we've got a box in that, uh, as you can see, a uh, mystery box. Now, I was told this is a 3D printer that is 95% pre-assembled before you get it. Now, I don't know if there's a communication problem here or not. We're going to find out because this is the Tarantula, and it's a pretty popular machine. Great price, pretty good size, you know, build plate and everything. But is it 95% complete in the box? Uh, we're going to find out right now. All right, I've started to cut the uh, box a little bit. The reason I say this about uh, tarantula is in the past they used to come in quite a few parts and you felt like you had quite a, an assembly worse than a, a furniture from Ikea. <laughs> This one here is, it's in an economy price class, but it's a nice size printer and what have you. But it has one specific thing that really a little bit mind blowing. And I could turn the box, I guess, uh, towards you. But here, I'll let me, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll read this off. These are the materials that this machine is said to be able to run. And yeah, if you're not into 3D printing yet, or you haven't really hit it yet, you're gonna find you're gonna find out that eventually this is something that'll that will come around at you. But PLA, PLA Flex, PLA Wood, ABS, PEG, uh, PET G, excuse me, uh, HIPS, uh, ASA, which is a real bugger of a plastic to run. Yep, PA, PC, and CF materials all can be run theoretically through this machine. That's more than. I think just about any of the machines I've had in to date. So if you're looking for a machine that can run, you know, like uh, automotive plastics and ASA and all that, uh, you might want to take a look at this. It would be a very inexpensive way to get into it. Now, I've got the box open and I don't officially, I can't, I still can't say 95% complete, but it looks like it is. So that's new. That's, that's new from T-Bolt. Uh, because the tarantula was always kind of like, you know, a lot of parts to put together. It looks like they've made some changes, and it looks like a lot of this is, like you say, there's almost nothing to assemble. Put the top on the base, probably, and just run it or something. Well-packed, beautiful uh, finish inside. So, uh, let me get the parts laid out and get all this foam and stuff out of here so we can have a good look at, you know, what's in this box. The... Uh, it looks to me like it is 95% complete. Wow. <laughs> that is cool. And also, look at this. The whole top, it's a beautiful machine here, but the whole piece, this is all already assembled for you. Usually this is something you have to sort of, you know, put together, but this one is completely assembled for the top. And as soon as I got this open and I looked in and I saw the build plate is already attached to the base. The only other thing I see here that needs to be uh, assembled will be the uh, the extruder itself where you're pushing your plastic through with the hot end. So that's cool. That's fine. That's not a, you know, that's kind of a no-brainer thing. But the whole machine is sitting in the bottom here and the rest of it is like up and ready to go. So, wow, let's get the rest of this, uh, man, let's get this unpacked. This is getting uh, exciting. Okay, now that we've gotten rid of the box, uh, here's the situation. This is the way it comes in the box. It's This is the base with the uh, base plate. You know, all of this is already assembled. So there's no funny business of putting things together. Yes, you'll have to dial your uh, leveling in afterwards, not a big deal. Here's your hot end, you know, got a power cord. Uh, also have the, uh, this is the rack that you're gonna be putting your spool on when you go to run your PLA for the future. And here's the top. And look at that, I mean, that's it, you know? So, wow, <laughs> it, it is 95% ready to go out of the box. So obviously for the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get this uh, up on here and pick the whole thing up and just set it up on top and that's how it's gonna go. You know you gotta write one, cause this plate here is gonna be facing you <laughs> at the front. And there's uh, four bolts that are gonna come up from underneath now I turned what they call the Z, the Z screw, the Z screw back here. I turned the Z screw back here a little bit and raised my gantry. This is this all assembly here is all part of what they call a gantry because the next thing we're going to install is we're going to simply uh, bolt this up or well, I shouldn't say bolt, yeah, bolt it up. Okay, the very next step was to put this on with the two screws that are 
furnished. So we've just finished uh, assembling, putting this, uh, the hot end here, mounting it up. I put the Bowden tube in to where the feed is, right back here. I've connected all my cables, so electrically we're ready to go. There's two small plastic uh, cap type screws that you're going to see. This here, these are tensioners. Don't put them on real super tight and crank them or something. Just snug them in a little bit. These belts are pretty much already tight. You don't want guitar string tight. You just want the belt that, you know, it's got just a boom boom. It's got a little bit of tension. These are actually pretty tight without even putting these screws on, but I put the screws on. The last thing, or the next thing we got to do is the feed, which will, the spool for this. And I like them on top. The, uh, I think what we can do, and we'll have to try it, but I think we can just go ahead and put this up here. So back the camera away a little bit. <laughs> so I've got the spool holder up on top. That's where I like to have it. The spool, the, the plastic or the filament will feed off the side of the spool here and go in through here to the, uh, the stepper motor for the uh, this is back here, which is a little different, but not really. It's just a little different, but <clears throat> it'll come around to the broken tube, and then it'll go down through to the hot end. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, do the bed leveling, and then I guess we'll run a bench sheet. I'm just thinking this morning for some reason that uh, I usually never touch the PLA that they include in any of these printers when they come in. And just for fun, I'm thinking, why don't we make uh, run this little bit of white uh, PLA they have, and just go ahead and make a benchy. Mm -hmm. So, without getting into a lot of time over this, but on the control package here, there's a nice uh, bed leveling program. And first thing you'll do is probably go home, go to home all. So we'll just home the machine. And as soon as it's finished uh, homing, which it is right about now, uh, I'm going to pick uh, front left for bed leveling and it'll come over to the this front left corner and we're gonna do the old you know paper trick as you can see we're like huh, yeah there's there's nothing there so we're gonna start unloading the uh, bed a little bit with the spring and then we're gonna bring the bed let's see we need to bring the bed up so in order to do that uh, we're gonna have to offload it a little bit let's let's go down wow the uh, bed, by the way, uh, I've noticed it's insulated. Also, it's got a nice foam insulation underneath. That'll help to keep the heat and keep things going, make the bed more efficient. Also, the control package is nice. I don't really have any argument about that. And full size SD card slot. Yes, yes, yes. Now, uh, we've done that a little bit there. So now we're going to go to uh, the next step in bed leveling, which would be the front right. We've got to definitely unload this bed. Yeah, unload the spring and let the bed up a little bit because we're nowhere near. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that's a little tight. That's not too bad. And I think we could tweak that some more yet. Okay, I'm going to just call that up. Yeah, I want to go back to uh, that other front. And the reason is because I want to... Uh, like I said before, I go back and forth, back and forth a few times to make absolutely sure you've got your bed leveled. And we're going to back this is back to this corner. And that is, yeah, that is a little tight now. So I'm going to take a little of that off until it feels like, yeah, it's dragging on the paper. It's not very scientific, I know. But this is bed leveling. You know, this is the cheapest, fastest way to do it. There's better ways to do it out there. But for us guys, well, it's, you know, now. Let's go to the back one. And let's see what we got at the back here for bed leveling. And control seems to be nice and responsive. Okay, so we're gonna to go to rear, rear uh, right. So that's gonna be over here. Okay. And again, oof, yep, the bed's, bed's gonna to have to be adjusted a little bit. And wow. It's nice that they packed it the way they did because the bed was really, wow, yeah, okay, there it is. That is just a nice little bit of friction right about there on the paper, not too much. Okay, now I'm going to go to uh, the next one, bed leveling. I don't know if there should be a rear, okay, rear left. That has to be the next one over here in the corner. I wonder if they have one for the center. I guess we're going to find out here in a second. 
and again we're gonna bring it down and again wow the bed needs to be uh, let up quite a bit in order to uh, be level there's uh, for the price of the machine there's a lot of pretty cool features here. What I can't get over is how many uh, items this thing can run, theoretically, on uh, on uh, filament, the different types of filament that it can run. That's pretty amazing. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's go to, let's see, uh, let's see if we have a center or anything like that. I don't know if we do. Mm, no, we do not. Okay, so we're gonna come back to the front left. And like I said, uh, we'll probably cut right now, guys. When we come back, I'll have this finished. Cause I'm gonna go around a couple times. And just make sure, and see this is off, that's why I do this. Now it also comes with a USB adapter uh, to a SD card. It also comes with a full size, full size SD card. It's not very big, you don't need very big. STL files are not very large anyway. So let's see if we can get this in here. And there it is there. Uh, when you do that, you're probably best to uh, power down. I'll usually power the machine off and power the machine back up. The other ones. I don't know if this one will be the same or not. Tub up. Uh, let's have a look here and just see if we have any projects because I really don't know what to expect. There, change filament. Oh, change filament. That's a good one because you can actually tell it to remove the filament up, you know, and drive it back so you can remove it to uh, change it. Lights. Default light preset custom lights. Wow. Shoo. Okay, go back to the main. Uh, change media. Uh, print from media. Let's see what we got here. And we have D. They have a test thing here or something. Not quite sure what that is. It's a G code test. Huh. Support G code 2020. Let's go back to Maine. Uh, English, yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah, English, okay. So you can set this in different languages. So that's pretty cool. Oops, what did I do? Uh, okay, we're rebooting. It. Um, so we've got our, uh, I've got my plastic PLA. They're, I couldn't get theirs to go. It's all dried and cracky. Like I said, I never use the uh, PLA that comes with the machine. I generally, uh, pretty much throw that in the trash can. I just, you know, I just find it's unusable. It's inexpensive. It's just something they throw in there for free. So not a big deal or a big, uh, <clears throat> yeah, not exactly a deal breaker. Now there is a test uh, print on here. I don't know what it is. So let's just print it and see what we got. Uh, where are we here? Change media, print from media. And there's some kind of a test uh, print. Uh, let's see if that'll start print. Hmm. On another side note, uh, I've got to give TiVo up an award for the tarantula here because right now this is the quietest 3D printer I think we've had in here to date. This thing is very, very quiet, very steady, running beautiful, and it's uh, still doing the uh, test print laying it down layer by layer, doing a nice job, which is a good thing because it helps to prove, you know, provide proof that the machine is uh, well worth not just the money, but it's gonna be able to do great prints. Uh, before I forget about specifications too, this is 235 millimeter by 235 millimeter by 250 millimeter uh, is the working size for this particular machine. And again, that's not a bad size. Another feature that this one has, which is pretty cool, it has a little monitor back here, so the filament's going through like a monitor first before it gets to the, the motor that's pushing the uh, filament. And so if you do run out of filament, it'll stop the machine and wait for it to be reloaded. Also, if there's a power failure, same thing. The machine will stop and wait. When the power comes back on, you can restart the project again. And theoretically, you shouldn't lose anything. That is... It's very good. It's just a nice feature to have in any of these 3D printers. This is just a quick look at the control package. The knob basically fine tunes up and down into what scan to what you want to do. When you push the button, it'll engage that program. So it's really easy to use. And a, a, a full size SD card. Yes, yes, yes. And while we're still running here, making the mystery cube. Uh, the other thing that I think I should mention is it comes with a spare nozzle. 
for your hot end, which is a, I've never seen that happen before. So that's a nice thing to have in case anything ever does happen to your nozzle. Also, you have a printer cable and you have a spare Bowden tube. That's that plastic tube up here that feeds the, uh, feeds the machine. Now, they don't go bad very often, but they can. So it's just something that's nice to have for a spare if something never does go wrong. Cool. Just a quick note here, uh, I went ahead and I already have an SD card that has the Benchy on it. So I threw the SD card in with the Benchy on it, which is also in G-code anyways, and it is reading it and it is going ahead and firing up the Benchy project. So hopefully in a few minutes here, I'll be able to show you guys the Benchy. Finishing up the Benchy, a uh, couple of things here. Great machine, very beautiful. Also has some uh, weird LED color thing going on here with the, like a different colors fading in and out sort of thing. It's kind of like one of those game machines or something. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> very modern, very quiet. The microphone's picking up a lot of noise, but it's really not. It's it's very quiet. But <coughs> the microphone's really good for some reason. The thing here too is I guess we need to take a look at is uh, who is this for and the very first thing is because it's so uh, easy to assemble because there's very few parts to put together if this is your first 3d printer it's a good choice because there's very little to put together and it has all the basics of a good full functional 3d printer you know you're not you know losing something or quality or whatever you're getting a good printer also, it has the availability to run uh, some kind of rather exotic materials like the ASA and the uh, ABS plastics. That's kind of mind-blowing, but I'll explain that. Uh, normally, when you run something like that, you have to really control your heat, even the cool-down situation. So a lot of times, I, I've seen people like wrap these things up in like uh, heat blankets or something while they run in order to help control that situation, that environment. So I'm not saying that just like this out of the box on a bench in a garage or something, no, I wouldn't recommend it. <clears throat> this bench is coming up really nasty looking, but there's good reasons for it. And I wanted to explain that because I've had quite a few people talk about having problems with prints. Well, this is a uh, good STL file. It's also a very good print on the right machine. This particular machine, it has different retraction, different settings, and I didn't change anything. I took the SD card right out of a different machine and put it in here. So in other words, this G-code really doesn't belong in here at all and, and wasn't you know sliced and set up to run on this machine. And yet we still got a eh, not too bad a bench. It's a little hairy, but you know the retraction studies, everything's wrong, you know, so it's like, yeah, this is what, uh, this is what can happen. And I was trying to explain that to uh, some viewers that you could have a bad STL file or you could have, you know, that your G-code uh, can still be wrong. The settings for the machine could be wrong. You've got to make sure that everything is set right before you say run a project and hopefully everything comes out right. This one here has a single screw uh, for the Z-axis. It has you know, it doesn't take up a lot of uh, bench space. This is not a real big bench or anything, and it's not taking up a lot of space on it, but it has a good size build plate for what it is. It has a great price for what it is, and it has a really nice, really nice looking finishes on this thing. So it's, it seems to be well built all the way around. This up here, uh, can you see that? Yeah, uh, probably should be off the side here and feeding down through something like that, but I always like them on top, and it's just something I've always done with all my printers. And so I just went ahead and did that. You really should have bolted to the side and have the filament feeding directly, you know, off the roll, straight into here to where, you know, it's feeding the filament down through to the hot end. The uh, bed is really well built. The belts are good on it. I like the tension settings that you have, although somebody could kind of you know, run past that a little bit. And it has uh, hard stop limits. So it is every part a full featured machine. 
and uh, I think we're just about, yeah, we're almost finished that messed up veggie, but <laughs> that one may have to be thrown in trash. I don't think anybody should see that one. It's, it's a little hairy, a little fuzzy and stuff, but like I said, the settings aren't fixed for this machine, but I'm surprised. Uh, the tarantula is doing the best it can with what it's got, and the bench is not coming out, you know, it's not coming out terribly bad. I expected something a lot worse than this. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Uh, overall, between price features and whatever, like I said, so I think that anyone that's apartment dwelling or it's your first 3D printer uh, or you want to build a printer farm, you know, for the price, phew, you could have a bunch of these, I guess. And also someone who's condo or if you're limited for space for hobby area, and you just, or you just want to use a little bit of funds and get into your very first 3D printer, this is not a bad machine to start with. It really isn't. It has all the everything, you, you know, so it's all, it's all very good. Before I forget, the, I will provide a link in the description below to where you can get this machine at a great price. It should be discounted, I believe, from what I understand. And uh, so it'll be, you know, it'll be hopefully an awesome buy. And it'll be through uh, Zbanix. So, yeah. Uh, I think you should take a look at that price because I think you might be surprised. I don't know. Guys, gals, hey. Oh, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. And uh, Thursday we have a draw coming up and also some announcements about some other issues or things going on with the channel. So it should be, should be interesting. Meantime, I want to thank you all for tuning in today, taking a look at us and seeing what's going on. Yeah, the Tivo Up uh, Tarantula. Nice 3D printer. Wow. Yeah. Over and out. <laughs>